Hi, my name is Jennifer and I won the Technovation competition in 2016. So a really interesting field uh, in computer science that's emerged over the past 50, 60 years or so is AI or artificial intelligence, which is the idea that computers themselves can have some sort of form of intelligence that will allow them to solve important problems. And so this development is very exciting because it allows computers to take on roles that previously we only thought that humans could possibly do. So today we're going to be speaking with some leading researchers in the field of AI to hear about how they're applying AI to their work and what sorts um, of, of achievements and research they're conducting to make AI even more intelligent. Hi, I'm Jennifer Neville. I'm an associate professor at Purdue University and my general area of research is artificial intelligence and machine learning. And today I'm gonna to talk about doing machine learning over social networks. So in machine learning, we consider scenarios like this where we have three people, Alice, Bob, and Carol, and we have some observations about what kind of music they're interested in. And we might wanna use that information to develop a predictive model that can take these other individuals where we don't have any observations about their musical tastes and we can make predictions for them. So how would we do this in practice? Well, in general, what we would look for is additional information that we have about Alice, Bob, and Carol in order to learn a pattern uh, relating their other attributes to the class label that we want to predict. So in this case, we might have information about what movies they like, what books they read, what sports they're involved in, and we want to figure out if there's a pattern that relates those interests to the kinds of music that they're interested in. So this process is called inductive learning, and it's generally what humans use to learn as well. It's a bottom-up process where we go from the data that we've observed to uh, formulate a hypothesis or a conjecture about how the world works. So specifically what we do is consider a set of possible hypotheses. We gather some data about what we see in the world and then we pick the hypothesis that seems to best match the data that we've observe, observed. So this process is exactly what machine learning algorithms try to automate and apply to very large data sets with much more complex models. So in my area of research though, we consider the scenario where we don't have as much information individually about each of the users, but what we do have is friendship information between the users. So if we knew that Alice and Bob were friends, and we knew that Carol was friends with somebody else named Dave, then it's likely that they're going to have similar interests. And we know that because of all the work that's gone on in social psychology and sociology, which says that people that are more similar are more likely to be friends with each other, and people that are already friends with each other are likely to influence each other to um, adopt some of the same behaviors and preferences. And so in this case, we, Alice and Bob are likely to both be involved, uh, both love hip hop, and Carol and Dave, in this case, uh, both love pop music. So to make predictions about Fred and Greg and Eve, we can see, look at how they're embedded in a larger friendship structure with Alice, Bob, Carol, and Dave, and then make predictions. So in this case, we would predict that Fred likes pop music because he's friends with Dave and Dave likes pop music. Um, Greg, on the other hand, is friends with Bob and Alice and they both like hip hop, so he's likely to uh, like hip hop as well. And then Eve is in the middle and she's friends with Fred and Carol and Greg, but both Fred and Carol love pop music and Greg loves hip hop. So because the majority of her friends like pop music, it's more likely that she's going to like pop music as well. And so what you can see here based on the friendship structure is that there's two basic clusters of friends that interact with each other and they tend to share the similar interests with inside each cluster. So this kind of uh, procedure is what we work on in my area of network machine learning, where we develop methods that try to exploit these patterns in relational structures at a much larger scale. So those are examples of applications of machine learning methods for network domains. In terms of the technical details of what's involved in developing these methods, it really involves three primary areas. The first one is there's the formal foundations of all the models is based on mathematics and statistics. Secondly, we use a lot of uh, algorithmic development from computer science to develop 
things that can search and evaluate over very large data sets. And third, we take insights and conjectures from social scientists that look more at the mechanisms by which people influence each other and how to infer things uh, about their interactions and try to incorporate that into the models themselves. So if you're interested in learning more about these kind of methods, I encourage you to take online classes, both in computer science and statistics, but also more generally in data science or mathematical psychology and sociology. Okay, thank you.